along with me this morning. It's a kind of a quick little message. We're going to have communion, and so I, as I thought about this, it's a, even my outline of my notes, it's a, it's a little smaller than normal, and so, um, and yet it's a pretty interesting topic you're going to look at. How do we face the future with confidence? How do you and I face the future with confidence? And that future's tomorrow. Um, it's not like 10 years away. It's, it's tomorrow. And so um, we're going to take a look at that. But before we do, let's pray. Great time of worship, right? Oh, yeah. Real, real good time of worship and praise. Kind of nice to have everybody kind of joining in as, as we do worship and have things to say and things input into that as well. But let's pray and prepare our hearts for the word today. Uh, our Heavenly Father, I just thank you for our time together. Father, I thank you for the body of Christ as we gather as a family uh, of believers together. I thank you, Father, for your love, your joy, and your peace. I thank you for this word that you're going to give us today to strengthen and encourage us. And I thank you, Father, for your healing power as you just stretch out and you, you heal us in spirit, soul, and body. And Father, we're just so grateful and thankful for all you do for us. And now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come. Be our teacher, be our guide. Illuminate the word today. And may not one word fall to the ground, but may it accomplish the purpose for which you and you alone send it, to touch the hearts and lives of the hearer today. And Father, I just ask your blessing on this time, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So how do we face the future with confidence? Um, if you go Lake City Way, how many ever go Lake City Way? And downtown Bothell, the Bothell kind of highway. How many see the palm reading groups? Seriously, how, yeah. you know, there, there's, I mean, big advertising, palm reading, um, tea leaves, horoscope, Ouija board, and on and on and on. And you think about this, and I, as I drive, and as I'm going to Sand Point, and I'm taking my boat and getting ready to go fish, there's these giant signs, again, I'm going to repeat myself, palm reading. And then it'll have, you know, the palms and all that. And I mean, these are big advertisings. And the point of it is, everybody wants to know the future. I mean, when you think about it, by and large, people want to know what's going to be going on next year, the year after. What's in store for my life? And people ask that question all the time. And so this morning, we're going to look at how you and I can face the future with confidence through the Word of God. Through very simple, 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 simple things. And uh, you probably heard me talk about this. If you've been with me the last 50 years, uh, you've probably heard this stuff before, but uh, I will repeat it. So we're going to look at Ecclesiastes uh, verse, uh, chapter 8 and verse 7. Since no man knows the future, who can tell him what is to come? So since no man knows the future, who can tell him what is to come? Well, what's real simple? Only God knows the future. Amen. Only God knows the future. No palm reader, no horoscope, no nothing. God knows our future. He knows all about us. And so James tells us three things to avoid if we're going to face the future with confidence. Okay? Three things to avoid. So Roman numeral number one, we'll just jump right into the study. First, planning without God is a mistake. It's plain and simple. Planning anything without God is a mistake. Yeah. And James, he illustrates this, and he, and, he, and he gives us an illustration in James chapter 4 and verse 13 of two businessmen, okay? So if you can have your Bible open or if you would just have the notes there, uh, we'll read it together. James 4, 13. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city. Spend a year there, carry on business, and do what? Make money. Now, if you think about it, a business plan, that's not a bad idea, right? I mean, this person's planning, aren't they? These two guys are talking. They're saying, you know something? Well, today or tomorrow, we're going to take off, and we're going to go to this city or that city, and we need to spend about a year there to establish our business, to establish the clientele. So we, we need to do that. And then the point of it all is to make money. And hopefully within a given period of time, we can retire. So, I mean, it sounds pretty good when, when you think of it in the natural, doesn't it? It's just a basic business plan. But what's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with this plan? 
Now you look at the details again, very simply, and they make their plan, they make the time, they make the date, all of those kinds of things. What's missing? God. Nowhere in this at all do you find the word God. It's not included in any of these plans. And so when you don't find the word God, then you got a problem. You have a problem. I don't care what your plans are. I don't care what they're all about. If God's not involved in them, they're worthless. It's, it's a waste of time. So I want you to understand this. James chapter 4 and verse 15 says, Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, if it's God's will, Amen. we will live and do this or that. Amen. Okay? So the solution is very, 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 very simple. Pray as you plan. Amen. You want to have success in the future, pray about it. Amen. Pray about it. And uh, I do this every day. In fact, um, this, I, I do write it down, Proverbs 16.3. Commit your ways or your plans to God, and they will succeed. Okay? So I have my quiet time, and I've told you this so many times, you're probably tired of hearing it. But I quote that verse to myself. You know, Lord, I commit my plans to you. First of all, I, I thank God, and I thank him for everything I can think of. And the second thing I do is, Lord, I commit my plans to you today. Well, today, what am I going to do? The most important thing, Father, I think I'm going to do is teach your word today. So I just commit that to you. I'm going to teach your word today. Thank you for the privilege of letting me do that. But I'm committing that plan to you because if I do it on my own, it's going to fail. And even if I don't do it eloquently and I slaughter words and phrases and misquote stuff, if God's anointing is on it, it will accomplish the purpose for which he has sent it. Amen. Right? Yeah. Amen. So I commit the plan to him. And Father, I'm going to cook oatmeal. I can hardly wait to get home. So I commit my oatmeal to you. Don't let it burn on the stove. Are you with me? See, it's the simplicity of life that brings us success. Sometimes we fail to include God in every facet of our life. So if you want to be successful, pray and plan together, all right? So we look at another scripture in Proverbs. Proverbs 16.1. Uh, we may make our plans, but God has the last word. <laughs> you may think you're doing really well, but God, he's going to have his will and his way done in your life. So it's better to partner with him, right? And have the plan succeed, and it's what he wants. So planning without prayer is presumptuous. Don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. You want to include God in every facet of your life 24-7, in every decision, every thought, everything that's going on in your life. That's how you're going to have success for the future. What's the future? 20 minutes from now. Right? Not 10 years from now or 20 years from now. And Proverbs 16, 9 says, we should make our plans counting on God to do what? Yes. Direct us. Counting on God to direct every step we take, every move we make. Roman numeral number two, second, presuming about tomorrow is a mistake. Being presumptuous about tomorrow is a, is a mistake. James 4.14. 4, Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Wow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will... And we will live and do this or that. And as it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Number one, this is very important. Life is unpredictable. Would you agree? I mean, <laughs> we can give so many illustrations of how life is unpredictable. I mean, each one of us, we, we think we're on, on the right path, on the right road, and all of a sudden, something just, bam, it just hits us. We don't know what's going on, why it's happening. You make these plans, you're praying, and then all of a sudden, everything just goes backwards. It goes in a circle. Life is unpredictable. And I think if it was predictable, it would take all of our faith out of the equation. Think about that. 
If everything was laid out and it was predictable and we knew everything that was going to go on, we wouldn't need any faith, would we? We wouldn't need to trust God for anything. But think about this, because life is unpredictable, we need to depend on God. We need to depend on him to direct every step we take in life, every decision we make in life, because of the fact life is unpredictable. And also, number two, life is brief, like a vapor of smoke. Life is very brief. I'm stunned when I see the um, folks that are 100 years old. War veterans, 96, jumping out of planes. Seriously. I thought, whoa, man, oh, man. I think 96 years, that's a long time. But yet, life is brief. It's short. None of us know how long we're going to live. God's got an appointed time for each one of us. So keep in mind, life is brief, and it's unpredictable. It, it's, we don't know what's actually going to be happening. Um, did any of you do this when you were a kid? Like on the window, it's kind of cold out and used to blow air onto a window. Did anybody ever do that? And then you'd draw little things on the window or you'd put your name. And then you'd wipe it away and then you'd do it again. And then it just, the mist just, it's gone. Right? That's life. We can write anything we want, draw any pictures we want. It'll vanish. Why? Because life is just like a vapor. It's a mist. It's short-lived. So the point I'm making is we got to make the most of everything, don't we? Yeah. we got to live life to its fullest. Live life the way God wants you to live it yeah. each and every day. With some of the negative and the bad times and the good times and all this other stuff, there's lessons to be learned. So the solution is this. Make each day count. Every day count. Don't live your life without every day being very important in the eyes of God as he directs your path. And that's on anything you're going to do. And somebody said, well, I don't do anything. I stay at home. I, I don't do much anymore. If you stay at home, I got great advice for you. Be a prayer warrior. Amen. Amen. Just be a prayer warrior. What good am I at home? I can't do anything. I lay in bed all day. Yeah, you can pray. Powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. All right, are you with me? So make each day count. Matthew 6, 34. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrows too. Live one day at a time. Live one day at a time. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. There's an old quote, and I got I got to quote this to you. It may not make sense, but it says this. Life by the yard is hard. Life by the inch is a cinch. <laughs> Are you with me? So don't get too far out there. And another thing I thought about is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us next year our daily bread. Give us next month our daily bread. What does it say? Give us today our daily bread. Live one day at a time and live it to the full because you may not have a tomorrow. But as you're praying and preparing each and every day, submit your plans to the Lord. I don't care how mundane they are. If you want to have success for the future, tomorrow's the future and you put it in the hands of God. If you need strength, he'll give you strength. If you need to overcome something, he'll give you power to overcome it. If you need to make a decision, he'll give you wisdom. He'll give you knowledge. He'll give you understanding. And then, as I said, in 2020, God's going to give every one of us an abundance of wisdom, peace, and power. Wisdom, peace, and power. Why? I'm going to tell you why. To live a successful Christian life every single solitary day every day, to make an impact on somebody. Not all of us can be like Chip. Not all of us are evangelists. Not all of us just, the doors open up wide. I got to smash down doors to even say hello to people half the time. It, it doesn't come that easy for me. 
Well, okay, uh, it's, it's not hard, but I mean, it's, anyway. <laughs> Live each day unto the Lord. Roman numeral number three. Putting off doing what is right is a mistake. Putting off doing what is right is a mistake. And it's simply the word procrastination. Can anybody tie into that word? <laughs> procrastination? <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a little poem that goes like this. Procrastination is my sin. It only brings me sorrow. I know I ought to change my life. In fact, I will. Tomorrow. <laughs> Not today. I'll live it out today, but I'll change it tomorrow. James chapter 4 and verse 17. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Now, isn't that interesting? You know the good you ought to do, and if you don't do it, God calls that a sin. Usually sins are stuff you do on purpose. You know, not kind of sins of omission or omitting things in our life. And that God's, God's always in this part of it. He wants to be every part and every facet of our life, every bit of our planning, every bit of our thoughts, everything. And so this procrastination, putting off things, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm not going to get into everybody. I, I could name some of you that do procrastinate about certain things. I will do this, and then a year and a half later, no kidding, I'm going to do it this time. And you don't do it. So... The solution to procrastination is this. It's very simple. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Don't promise something unless you're going to do it. Don't spout off your mouth unless you can follow up with your, what you're going to say or what you're going to do. Because we find ourselves in this, this framework of procrastination, and it can, co it can go over in all kinds of different things. All kinds of different things. And God doesn't want us to procrastinate. He wants us to be active. And he wants us to do what he has in store for each one of us. Amen? Each one of us. And so um, when I used to play sports when I was in high school and uh, played basketball and that kind of stuff, and I remember my coach, Starbuck Roberts. Starbuck Roberts. And um, he's an old, 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 old time <laughs> basketball coach. Not a run and gunner. I mean, he played for Hank Iba, OSU, the old, old. Do you know any of these names I'm even talking about? Okay, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, he used to say to me, Bill, excuses only satisfy those who give them. Buddy, you're not helping me out at all. I don't care why you didn't do what I asked you to do. You didn't do it. You can make any excuse you want. But when you do that, who cares? It only supposedly helps you. But it really doesn't, does it? No. No. So stop making excuses. Now, lastly, and I, I stop here. I said this is kind of a short message today, right? We're going to have communion break and kind of get ready for that. So the, in, the, to get over procrastination, we want to start today. Start today. Amen. Today is the day that the Lord hath Amen. made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. So if we want to have success in our life, we've got to start today, not tomorrow. We have to start including God in all of our purposes, all of our plans, all of our things every single day. And I, again, I cannot state this highly enough. Write down Proverbs 16.3 again. Write it down and do it every single solitary day. I will be calling you. <laughs> I don't have text stuff. I don't know how to text. I have a flip top phone. I will go no further than that. But what's important is commit your plans to the Lord Amen. every day and they will succeed. Amen. Amen. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time. And thank you, Father, for the simplicity of this word, how to how to have success in our futures. It's so simple. We just have to include you. That's all there is to it. First and foremost, commit our plans to you, commit everything to you. So, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this body of believers. 
I thank you, Father, for the privilege of just standing up here this morning. And I thank you for your healing power. So we give you praise and glory and thanksgiving as I ask your blessing on each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.